Ladies and gentlemen, I'll make the announcement at 801 we have a quorum. I am impressed. Thank y'all very much. This is we're at 18 and counting. Do all the members have a budget? I think the budget office has been handing them out as you come in, as you came in. If you don't have one, raise your hand and let us know. And if someone else comes in and we don't see them, please help us to get them a budget. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call the uh, meeting of the Senate Appropriations Committee to, uh, to order. Um, first order of business would be to adopt the rules, uh, since this is our first meeting of the biennial. Uh, the rules are posted in your, in your uh, folders. Uh, I would tell you that they're basically the same rules as before. We've, the committee number changed, so the quorum has changed. Uh, we added a couple from the standard list that the, the uh, uh, Legislative Council has offered uh, recommendations on cell phones and uh, the fact that the rules of the Senate control in any case that uh, these rules don't apply. So with, uh, you look those over and if uh, I could have a motion on the rules. A motion from Senator B. Miller. Second was who? Uh, Senator Alvarez, okay, yeah. A motion and second to adopt these rules. Uh, any discussion on that motion? All in favor, uh, please uh, say aye. aye. All opposed, no opposition. So rules are adopted. Thank you very much. I'm gonna call uh, HB 43, committee sub for the amended FY 2017 budget uh, to the floor and uh, we'll, uh, we'll make comments from here. <coughs> I would just tell you that uh, uh, the amended budget, for the most part, uh, appears to sort of meet the principles of budgeting that the Senate has adopted over the years in, in that the amended budget should be for truing up the numbers, for, crit for funding critical items, and, and for other things that, uh, that are not new initiatives that uh, need to be undertaken in the general budget. Uh, probably this year, the amended budget may be used a little bit more for uh, shifting some capital costs, but I think if you look at the big picture, it generally does meet those principles, and I, I recommend this budget to you. Um, this is the FY 2017 amended budget, House Bill 43. Let me, of course, first stop and thank the uh, Senate Budget and Evaluation Office and Melody Debussy and, and all the analysts who are mostly here in the back who worked with each subcommittee. The, the way we do this with we don't take a day off to, to do committee reports. We, I know that many of you are standing committee chairman as well, and so I know that it's additional duty and it, it is uh, sometimes difficult to plan, but we appreciate your devotion to the duty of serving on the, on the Appropriations Committee and, and serving as a subcommittee chairman. And I, I just want you to know it doesn't go unnoticed that you all work very hard to turn this budget around in just a few days. Uh, to the chairman of the subcommittees and chair lady, uh, of the 11 subcommittees, I, I thank you for your work and, and diligence in holding hearings and, uh, uh, and working on your reports and getting them in on time as well. The uh, FY17 amended budget totals $24.345 billion and is based on a 3.2% growth over the actual FY16 revenue collections. I would make that point to, <clears throat> to make the point that it's a very conservative budget, it, it has, it, uh, it does meet the needs of the state without uh, adding unnecessarily to the growth of government. And I would be willing to bet that uh, most states would, uh, uh, being able to meet the needs as we have with a 3.2% growth is pretty, pretty good compared to many, many states. This budget contains um, or includes about $1.73 billion in motor fuel proceeds that are appropriated in this budget. 
that's an increase since we implemented House Bill 170 of some $734 million in new revenues going to transportation for the state. This amended budget actually increases the amount being spent on transportation due to these revenues of 100, about $108 million. So that's how much is added in this budget for transportation. Uh, so House Bill 170 is certainly paying off in, in proceeds for the state to, to meet our transportation needs. <clears throat> also, in, in this budget is $1.07 billion in lottery proceeds that we've spent on the, on the three programs that uh, lottery proceeds are spent as well. There are not a number of items in this budget that, uh, where the Senate agrees with the governor's proposal. In fact, I would tell you that there are really not too many changes at all to the House version and or the governor's version as well. In some cases, we, we had a little bit later data and maybe trued up some numbers. We, we don't have really uh, any Senate initiatives to speak of. They're very small, any that we do have. So in most cases, we've, we've joined with the House and the governor. And uh, I think you'll, when you see the, the list of differences between the two budgets, you'll, you'll see that I'm, I'm correct in that. But let me just uh, mention a few of the things that we agreed to, and then I'll touch on a few of the, few of the differences. But not, not, I'm not going to try to read the entire budget to you and, and, and all, but I, we're certainly welcome to answer questions. And, uh, and between now and the time, we take it up on the floor as well. Uh, this budget agrees with the governor and the House and adds $50 million in one Georgia fund to construct a new Georgia cyber range in Atlanta, in Augusta, excuse me, uh, that you, you've heard a good bit about. Uh, it's going to be a training center on the location, on the site of the old uh, Golf Hall of Fame in Augusta. It adds $26.5 million uh, to one Georgia, the One Georgia Authority for Economic Development Projects, which agrees with the amount that George, the governor and the and the House budget, these are what we call edge and equity grants, and that's the two classifications of economic development grants we have. Budget funds the 20% pay increase for law enforcement, for state law enforcement person, officers. Uh, this half year uh, cost, uh, which began, that pay raise began January 1, uh, this half year totals $27.2 million, and you'll see a figure roughly twice that in the 18 budget. The <clears throat> Senate agrees with the governor and the House and funds the mid-year adjustment for education for mid-term uh, enrollment growth. That totals about $91.8 million. This budget adds some $16.8 million to the Move On When Ready uh, program, meeting the projected enrollment of high school students in post-secondary institutions. That's an increase of 28.8%. Uh, so Move On When Ready is, is really growing, and I think we... Well, I think that's a good thing for students in the state. In community health, the Senate agreed to uh, utilize tenant settlement funds uh, to match $24.9 million in federal funds to fully fund the Indigent Care Trust Fund for disproportionate share hospitals. Uh, and those, the payments are for private deemed and non-deemed hospitals. And this is a payment we make every year to ensure that private hospitals that provide indigent care are reimbursed some amount of that. In human development, the Senate agreed with the governor and the House to add $6 million to fund 250 additional slots for the new options waiver and comprehension, uh, comprehensive supports waiver program for developmentally ad, uh, disabled adults. We also agreed with the governor and the House to fund $6.1 million for supportive housing for mental health consumers who have severe and persistent mental illness uh, to live in community settings. This is part of the uh, DOJ uh, agreement. We agreed with the House to move a 57% <clears throat> raise for DFAX foster parents from July to April, but with later data, we adjusted the amount to $2.5 million. We also put language in to start a process of coordinating with OPB and the House to work towards a similar raise for other private child placement agencies who are also foster care providers. We agreed with the House to add $746,000 to implement a $1 per day increase for relative foster care parents which will be effective April 1. The Senate agreed with the House and increased the amount going to replenish the governor's emergency fund. Uh, he had initially uh, uh, budgeted $10 million to replenish the fund. The House added $5 million uh, uh, given the, uh, the severity of the cost of meeting the needs of the South Georgia area due to the storms recently. Uh, the Senate agreed to that extra amount, which totals now $15 million. 
Senate agreed with the House and the governor add, to add $10 million in state general funds for the Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank. This budget agrees and adds $10 million for the Forestry Commission for badly needed heavy uh, forest fighting equipment. The Senate agrees with the House and the governor to add $8.9 million for hazardous waste cleanup needs. That's a, that's a pretty big number, but it, it meets a priority list of hazardous waste uh, projects that need addressing. The Senate agrees with the governor of the House and adds $15 million for forest land protection grant uh, reimbursements. This, this is uh, to reimburse local, syst local systems and governments for revenue that's lost uh, due to forest lands being put in the CUBA program. The Senate agreed with the House to increase funds for career technical and agricultural education equipment grants for school systems, but we increased the amount. We were able to find funds to increase that amount to $5.5 million. The Senate agreed to fund $2.5 million to contract with a nationally recognized vendor through the Department of Education, and then after input and consideration from local systems for assessment tools to aid in ensuring children can read by the end of the third grade, which is a, a certainly a top priority. And this, this study will give us some tools, we hope, to not wait until the end of the third grade to find out a child needs, needs help and uh, needs uh, uh, remedial uh, help. So these assessment tools are not more testing, but, but assessment tools to help, help teachers and, and uh, systems to, uh, to find children who need, need help early on. So those are generally the highlights. I, you know, we, I, I tried to pick out the items that I thought had wide interest, but uh, at this point I'd be happy to, to uh, entertain questions. And of course, um, Melody Debussy is here as well and can give you, she can give you the real word. I can give you a word, but she can give you the real word. So if uh, someone has a question, I'd be glad to, glad to entertain it this time. Any questions? I have a potential motion, but I'll, let's be sure if anybody has a question. Well, just to understand this, I know you're looking at the budget and you're flipping the pages to see if something you're interested in is in there or not in there. Just understand we'll, we're ready to answer questions at any time today or tomorrow. We we'll go to rules tomorrow. And uh, if you need information or backup or any decision that we made, see me or see uh, Melody and we will get that information for you. But we appreciate the work of the committee. And, of course, we've got a big task ahead of us in uh, working on the 18 budget, which will take, uh, obviously, a considerable amount of effort and work. And I look forward to that challenge and that process. Any questions? Chair, I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion from uh, Senator Miller. And I, I believe your motion that you were thinking about making was that you, <laughs> you moved to pass by subsidy House Bill 43. <laughs> I have a second from, okay. Any other discussion on the motion? All right, I assume you're ready to vote. All in favor of passing out House Bill 43 by substitute, please raise your hand. Uh, uh, Senator Jeffries is not voting, but I think he's for it. I'm pretty sure Senator Kennedy. Uh, okay, any, all right, thank you very much. Any opposed votes? I don't see any opposed votes. Bill passes by substitute by unanimous vote. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for getting here at an early time of the day. Thank you very much. You got this thing down to a science. Did you ever think?